So I'm back this week with another one lens challenge, and this time I'm going to use the Sigma 100 to 400 on my Nikon Z7 II. So this is my second one lens challenge on the channel. The first one I did with the Panasonic GX85 and a 25 millimeter lens, which on that camera body works out to be a 50 millimeter equivalent. And I found that challenge a lot of fun. I did down here in the same area I'm in right now, which is Hocking Hill State Park in Ohio. And it's one of my favorite local areas to photograph. It's only about an hour from home and just a myriad of things to photograph. But I think the value of that one lens challenge is it sort of makes you really think about your compositions and not make it easy by swapping lenses and zooming or anything like that. So I like to do one lens challenges with primes or just focal lengths I don't normally use to make it just a little more of a challenge and to force my head to think a little differently. So this time I decided to use my Sigma 100 to 400 for this challenge and I've had this lens for a little while now but I'm still getting used to it, still getting used to that focal length in general. Um, I think my last big trip with it was pretty successful. Walked away with a lot of good images, so I'm starting to grow more fond of the 100 to 400 focal length. But it's always been in more like West Virginia where there's big wide open spaces, more vistas and things like that. Whereas today, I've come down into, like I said, one of my local areas, Hocking Hills. I lead workshops here, get down here a lot. It's, it's pretty close to me, so it's one of my often photographed spots. So I'm expecting today's challenge to be a bit of a challenge. I'm used to photographing this area with a wide angle, like a 14 to 30 or a 24 to 70, you know, a mid-range lens. So I think looking at it with a 100 to 400 is really going to force me to stop, pause, and think. Um, but I think it's good. It's sort of like an exercise to sort of train your brain to think in different focal lengths so that you can come away with the best images. So it uh, should be fun. Got a couple areas in mind. I'm going to hear pretty early in the morning, so we're going to hit... One of the areas that'll probably get a little more popular, and then we're gonna head off in one of the little side gorges and do some work back in that way. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good time, only using the Sigma 100 to 400. And again, I find it an exercise to try to train my head to think in that focal range length. That way when I'm out and about walking around looking at compositions, I don't only think about wide angles and mid range, my head can start to know a little more intuitively what a 100 to 400 work look like. So. Let's uh, see how that goes. Okay, so the first place we stopped is at Cedar Falls. This is one of my popular workshop destinations. I photograph here a lot. Uh, in my snow day video, we photographed here. It's one of the highest flow waterfalls within the park, so it's almost always running. We did get, oh, I want to say when I looked it up, an inch and three quarters of rain down in this area yesterday. So I figured most things would be running pretty good, which is good because the fall was pretty dry and a lot of these falls were pretty dried up. So usually when I'm here photographing this falls is I'm using a wide angle lens, like a 14 to 30, sometimes a 24 70 if I'm working over in this direction. And that's where a lot of my shots are. So for today's challenge, using a 100 to 400 is a pretty big jump for me. So again, the whole point of this challenge is to sort of exercise your mind, to think differently about common scenes, to learn how the 100 to 400 looks so that more naturally when I'm out and about, when I'm looking at a scene, I can sort of gauge, do I think it's a better wide angle shot or more of a small scene with a 100 to 400. So because it's a smaller area, I think the 100 to 400 can be that more of a challenge for me today because I'm used to those wider mid-range focal lengths. So what I'm starting is I'm set up over here and what I've got is lining up in the falls and just trying to look for interesting patterns within the falls. Down here at the bottom where the water comes together, there's some cool stuff happening. Up there at the top where it's sort of a straight shoot. Up there at the top where it's sort of a straight shoot is pretty cool. So I'm sort of playing with that first. Then I think before it gets too crowded, there's a set of stairs that go up above these cliff walls. I'm probably gonna work my way up there and then assuming it's still not too crowded, I'll probably come back down and see what other small scene I can find with this 100 to 400 and play with it. So uh, let's work from there. I said, I'm trying to look for where interesting patterns in the water are happening but it really takes some deliberation. It's more than just zooming in and hoping you get a good shot. It's sort of trying to think about how is it moving through the frame? 
What does it look like? Does the pattern that I'm seeing from here make sense at this focal length? So again, that's sort of what I'm working through from this spot before we move on and try to get something up off of here. So one thing is I've been working through the scene, I was looking where the water was coming together and sort of crisscrossing, but there's also where it sort of cascades across this rock and it's sort of thin there, but the water's moving across it. So I'm trying to play around a little bit with that. Zoomed all the way into 400 millimeters. I am running a slightly higher ISO of 640 right now so that I can get the shutter speed fast enough to get a little bit of detail. Too slow a shutter speed because of how I'm zoomed in and that influences how fast the water's moving across the frame. Um, if I go too long of a shutter speed, more of like a normal, you know, half second, one second shutter speed, that water would just turn too cloudy white for me. But yeah, interesting scene. I'm sort of glad I saw that. And again, that's part of working with these challenges is trying to look at it with this. If I wasn't doing a challenge, it'd be too easy to just get, oh, I can't find anything. Let me just toss on the lens I know is going to work and go with that. Instead, I'm making myself use this lens help me learn that focal length and help me learn to look for those smaller details so it becomes more natural in the future. Okay, I'm going to move up this direction, up these stairs, some of these observation decks. Stood on them before to watch the falls, but I've never really photographed them from them before. So we're gonna sort of pack the gear up, make our way up there um, before this area gets too crowded later in the morning and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm struggling a little bit to find the shot I want. I came up here to this stairs that sort of come down to the falls from the other direction. And I'm struggling to find my shot, especially challenging particularly possibly with this lens. But I am gonna to try to set up right down here awkwardly on this set of steps. There's sort of a gap in the trees I can sort of shoot through. And this is where learning what the 100-400 actually looks like to my eye without putting it up. Uh, we're gonna see if 100 is still too telephotoed in on this. Um, but we're gonna set it up see what happens. Like I said, that's part of the fun of the challenge is you get something and then trying to confirm whether it actually works with the focal length you're shooting with or not. Okay, so I got the camera out and then just sort of handheld it to see if I can get what I want. And it actually works out fairly well. Let's me shoot right through this clutter and get the falls in a vertical shot coming down through the, through the rock there. So we're gonna get the tripod set up for that. And like I said, it's gonna be a little awkward because I got these steps sort of like right here and they're just about where I wanna be. So we'll see what we can get going on. But let's get the tripod set up, get this out and see. Okay, so I managed to get my tripod set up on this configuration, which is I'll video it real quick so you can see this is not the world's best tripod setup, but it works. And I've got it real close to the shot I want. I'm just gonna play with the composition a little bit. And like I said, I'm zoomed in just a touch over 100 millimeters. So like I said, when I eyeballed this, I wasn't 100% sure. I thought maybe 100 would be even too tight for this particular scene I'm looking for. But it turns out once I get it all set up and everything like that, it, it fits in as sort of how my head had looked at it. So that's why these, again, to repeat, that's why these challenges are important is it really can help you learn your lens very well so that when you're out in the field trying to make a lens choice you know which focal length is going to be best or when you're just eyeballing a scene using your actual eyes to see the certain focal lengths you want to see it with so learning that 100 to 400 range in this particular case so i'm going to pack up from here i'm going to move back down to the base of the falls look for something else to shoot the 100 to 400 what else i can uh pose up, probably something not centered on the waterfall. And then we're gonna hike back down the gorge that way a little bit. There's a couple little spots I wanna check out, plus it opens up a little bit with some rock walls that I think will present some interesting scenes. Okay, so I moved back down to the base of the falls. And at first I fell back into my overwhelmed by the big scene and how am I gonna chop this up into something smaller that looks interesting. And so I had to wander around a little bit and then I found this interesting little cascade of water over here and I sat down and started photographing it and it's just not working for me but at least my head shifted into looking for those smaller patterns of smaller scenes. I don't think this one's going to work out it just doesn't have the right textures there's not a pattern in there or anything like that but again um, you know I sat down I at least got my head back into 
the 100 to 400 type photos, the little smaller scene, gave it a shot, this didn't work. But now I sort of know what's not working with this one, so I'm gonna poke around here a little more and see if I can find one that does work. So I said I wasn't gonna do any more waterfall, but as I was looking around, studying the scene, it's a little bit of rain. Actually, it's raining pretty good right now, but I'm underneath a tree, so I'm relatively sheltered. But as I was looking at the falls, that lower part where the water has an interesting texture, from this side, it's got more of a dark, shadowy cave behind it, and so I just thought it'd make for an interesting uh, composition. So I'm sort of trying to frame that up, get the shutter speed right so there's enough texture in the water. So just sort of playing with this shot a little bit, watching the rain, figuring out what my next step is from there. And uh, yeah, gonna work a little more on the shot. So the rain has picked up now. I had to put on some rain gear, got the camera bag under its waterproof cover. And I'm not gonna leave quite yet. I'm gonna head back down the gorge a little bit and see what I can find. Maybe find a little shelter and work on a couple shots out there. We'll see what happens. You'll know when I get back and do my closing on this video, whether anything worked out that way or, it, or not. So we'll go from there. Okay, it's raining pretty good right now, so I switched over to the GoPro just because it'll stay safer than my normal video camera. And I came a little bit further down the gorge and I found one last spot I'm gonna stop. There's this big slump block here. It's got moss, some roots, and the trees growing on top of it. So we're gonna take some pictures here, work around a couple different compositions, see how that goes. Again, shooting the Sigma 100 to 400. Then we'll sort of pack things up and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, so that wraps up my one lunge challenge with a 100 to 400. Uh, I did get pretty wet out here, but I was pretty happy with that last stop. I thought that there were a couple of interesting shots out of there. Again, teaching you think about those small scenes, that slump block I took pictures of, I walked by, again, countless times, and I've never really thought a whole lot about it. But with that 100 400, it starts to shift how you think about things and how you would compose things, and it, it you know gets you out there doing it. So that's what I find is a value of a one lens challenge. And it doesn't have to be a 100 to 400. Like I said, last time I did it with a GX85 and a 25 millimeter, which works out to be a 50 millimeter equivalent. You know, I do find it more interesting to do with some prime lenses or focal lengths you're really not used to, because I think that's what stretches the mind muscle and does it. But I highly encourage you if you're stuck in a rut or trying to learn the lens or something like that, do a one lens challenge. I tend to do it one trip at a time, but you could amplify that and do a whole month with one lens wherever you go, whatever you're doing. And I think that'll really help you learn that lens and ingrain in your head what different focal lengths look like, which gives you a nice tool set when you're out there doing the landscape photography, knowing sizing up a scene. Might keep you from overlooking scenes. There are a couple that I stopped at today that you know, I haven't stopped at before, but because of the focal length I had, I looked at it just a little differently and photographed it. And like I said from the beginning of the video, I did find it challenging. There's many times back at Cedar Falls where I walked up to the falls and I was just like, well, I'm, I'm thinking wide angle. I'm thinking big scene. And it took some work and effort to sh get my head into that focal length and think about that focal length. Um, I think I walked away with some okay shots, nothing great, but that's what the practice is all about. I'm always preaching on this channel, get out there and practice. And that's why I wanted to come out with that 100 to 400 to practice with it. I've liked some of the shots I've gotten off of it in the past, but I sometimes feel like they were a little lucky. So trying to get more deliberate, use this challenge to learn that lens to do so. So yeah, great morning out, a little bit of rain. Uh, wish I could stay longer, but I got places to be uh, this afternoon. So I'm gonna head back. So if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including behind the scenes, tips, tricks, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.